So you guys are now, uh, you've done GDP, you've done CPI, GDP deflator, the measures of the price, inde the price indexes, uh, so you can get measures of inflation. Um, but one of the other problems that we face in the economy is the problem of unemployment. And uh, these statistics, I mean, that's basically what we've got in this unit, is understanding what the statistics are, what's included, what's not included, how we get these statistics to better understand them. Because a lot of times the media, they, they start you know, mentioning the statistics and really have no clue. Their interpretation is often wrong because they don't understand or they haven't put the time into understanding how these things are calculated. Um, so especially in the last year, I think I've heard a lot of really interesting things, some good things, some bad things in terms of uh, the unemployment rate and in terms of the interpretation of it. So first thing that you got to understand um, when we're dealing with the unemployment rate is what it means to be unemployed. First of all, no job does not mean you're unemployed. Okay, if someone's a beach bum and they're a beach bum by choice, they are not unemployed. Not having a job does not make you unemployed. Okay, how many times am I going to repeat that? Probably a lot. But you have to, one, not have a job, but also be willing and able to work in a job. So it's, it's not just a matter of, well, that person doesn't have a job. I mean, a little baby doesn't have a job. That doesn't mean they're unemployed. They're not able to work. Uh, a retired individual, they may be able, but they're not willing. They want to in, enjoy their retirement. Uh, Stay-at-home parent, they're not willing. They don't want to go out in the labor force. They would prefer to stay at home and take care of their kids or, or, or work at home. Um, so they are not considered unemployed. So that's the first thing, is making sure we understand what it means to be unemployed. So let's talk a little bit about, because to understand unemployment, we've got to understand what it means to be counted in the labor force. So if you take a look at the worksheet you have, the calculating unemployment worksheet, it's got a little table on there. And what we want to start with, if we're figuring out the unemployment rate, is start with the entire population. So we've got the entire population there. Who in the population is not able to work? Now, this may be a bit of a judgment call, but First off, let's take the kids out. Now, where do we cut that off? Uh, some people might say, hey, a kid, 13, 14, they could work. But we're going to make that cut off at 16. So under 16, those kids, we're pretty much going to say, don't really have the ability to work in a modern labor force. Um, now, like I said, that's a judgment call because there are some kids that uh, it could be working at younger ages, especially in agricultural communities. It could be helping out on a farm. There are a lot of things that they could do. But for the purpose of calculating unemployment, we pretty much consider kids under the age of 16 not a part of the labor force. Not even just not a part of the labor force, but we're going to subtract them out of the people who are able to work. So we take the total population, subtract off the kids. Now who else is out there that's not able to work? Well, that's what we're going to call the institutionalized. So the institutionalized, that's people who are in prison, people who are uh, incapacitated, uh, maybe in a mental, uh, mental hospital, uh, otherwise not able to be a part of the labor force. Um, now, could be, uh, it could be in a, uh, a home uh, if we take the elderly. Now, I'm not talking a retirement home where they're playing a shuffleboard. I'm talking about a nursing home where they're physically unable to, to be a part of the labor force. So we take out the institutionalized, all those people who are unable to work. Take out all the kids. And so what we're left with at that point is what we call NIAP, the non-institutionalized adult population. Take those out, we got NIAP. NIAP basically is all the people who are able to work, all the people in the society who are able to work. But then we said, we have to look at whether they're willing to work or not, too. So there's going to be a lot of people, and I mentioned some of those before, who aren't willing to work. Maybe a full-time college student. They want to be focused on their education so they can improve their job opportunities in the future. So they choose not to be a part of the labor force. Stay-at-home parents. A beach bum. Um, a retired individual. These are people who have the ability to work. They're able to work, but they aren't willing. They don't want to work. They choose not to, okay? And therefore, they are not a part of the labor force. So to be a part of the labor force, you have to be willing and able. 
So what we did before is we took out all the people who were not able to get in the app. Once we get in the app, there's two kinds of people in there. There's people who are willing and able, and then there's people who are not willing. So if we subtract out the people who are willing, I'm sorry, who are not willing from the app, what we're left with is the labor force. These are all of the people in the economy who are willing and able. Okay? So you see that on your table, and you can calculate those um, to, to get a feel for that. There's some explanation there on the worksheet, and hopefully this just adds a little bit to it. So what's the next thing? Now that we've got the labor force, we want to know the percentage. And this is one of the important statistics. It's widely underreported when it comes to the unemployment rate. Really, to understand the unemployment rate, we really have to understand what is known as the labor force participation rate. Because sometimes we see changes in the unemployment rate. And in one of the other videos, I'll talk about this some more. But those changes in the unemployment rate are not so simple to interpret without looking at the labor force participation rate. So what's the labor force participation rate? Pretty simple. It's the ratio of the labor force to the non-institutionalized adult population. What percentage of all those who are willing and able are willing to work? And so you would take labor force, the number of people in the labor force, divide it by NIAP, the non-institutionalized adult population, and then times that by 100 to put it in percentage terms. Okay, So that's labor force participation rate. But now that we've kind of narrowed things down to the labor force, now in the labor force, this is all of the people who are willing and able to work, there's two groups, those who have jobs and those who don't. The employed and the unemployed. The people who are willing and able to work but don't have a job are the unemployed. So if we add together the employed plus the unemployed, you've got the labor force. Or another way of getting that is to take uh, the labor force and subtract out the unemployed. That leaves you with the, I'm sorry, subtract out those who have jobs, leaving you with the employed. And so what the unemployment rate is, is this going to be what percent of the labor force, those willing and able to work, do not have a job? What percent? Okay. Now there's a percentage, and we're going to look at this and try to understand and interpret this a little bit better, um, because those numbers can change, and sometimes the unemployment rate can change, and not because we have more unemployed people, but because the labor force has changed in size. And so that's going to be something that's important, and we understand what the causes of a change in the unemployment rate are, so that we have a proper interpretation. Okay, so that's basically it. That's how you calculate the unemployment rate. Okay, so go ahead. Uh, you guys are aware with Mr. Kozon. You guys go ahead and calculate some. You've got those on the front page, but you've got a table on the second page where you can go ahead and calculate the labor force participation rate, calculate the unemployment rate, and get a feel for that. All right? Talk to you soon.